Hey y'all and welcome to the Crazy Sock Lady YouTube channel. My name is Kay and I am the owner and woman behind Crazy Sock Lady and Crazy Sock Lady Co Shop. It is Wednesday, January 26th. <laughs> It's almost 10 a.m. I've just been getting some housework done. My mother-in-law was here visiting over the weekend and she left this morning. So I thought, let's sit down. I've got a ton of stuff here on the sofa beside me. I've got project bags, yarn that's came in the mail that actually, oh no, it's over there. Thought maybe I was forgetting something. I've got so much to share with you today. So we're just gonna jump right in. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as the Crazy Sock Lady, and we do have a Ravelry group for this podcast, and I will have links to all of those places right down below this video. Per usual, a dog needs a drink of water as soon as I start recording. It cracks me up, it's every single time. Okay, I think he's done. Yes, so much to share with you. I finished a lot of things. I'm going, I put notes on my phone because otherwise I will totally forget. And I actually don't have two of the things to show you. One is upstairs, but, um, well, I guess I don't have a couple of things, more than a couple, but anyways. I finished Eric's socks for his birthday. Let's start with that. We're with finished objects. I will put photos up here of the socks that I do not have to show you. So Eric's socks for his birthday, I knit those out of Bumblebee Acres in the Space Time Continuum colorway. I did the String of Lights pattern by Lindsay of Sock Witchery. And I gave those to him for his birthday, which was yesterday. So those are done. They've already been gifted. I figure he probably has them on today. I didn't even check, but I imagine he probably wore those today. I also started and finished a pair of DK weight socks for my mother-in-law and gifted those to her while she was here. Those were out of Beachy Breeze Fibers on their Boardwalk DK base in the Glacial Ice, I believe was the name of it, colorway. And I should say project pages for every single project that I talk about will be linked down below. If I forget to mention the name of a yarn or a pattern or you have questions about needle sizes that I might have used or anything like that, everything will be on the Ravelry project page and those are linked below. Okay, so the DK weight socks, I did my DK weight vanilla sock pattern and they turned out so good. I love DK weight socks. They are so cozy. I actually think I've only kept like one pair for myself, I think. So I need to knit myself some more DK socks. <laughs> oh, that reminds me, I need to grab some yarn out of my bag to talk to you about before I forget. Let me grab it. Okay. <laughs> it actually ended up being downstairs. I put it down there so that Calvin wouldn't get into it. Okay, I'll set those over there. Okay, so I finished the DK weight socks. I have finished the dishcloths that I was working on out of the Kunai colorway from Knit Picks. I don't have a picture of those, sorry. And they're all, like they, they've been used and they're being loved and all of that. But I did finish two dishcloths which finished off that colorway. And now I've moved on to a new colorway which we will talk about in a moment. And I'll go over all the dishcloth details when we do that. My other, well my last finished object, <laughs> That's quite a bit for two weeks, huh? My last finished object is my Moon Glow Yarn Co. Advent project. And this is the Advent Wallop Cal. It'll be linked in my project page, but it is done. I'll show you both sides. It's a, it's connected. see the eyelets and each color change so I did I talked about this last time but I did loosely follow the pattern I mean I cast on the same amount I used the needle sizes recommended 
I used about the same amount. It was written for, I believe, a 10 gram advent calendar. So I used about 10 grams for each color, but I did not do like different transitions at the color changes like she has in the pattern. I just found the instructions for the eyelet transition and that's what I did. I did the eyelet row at the beginning. Um, that's the first row with the new color when I switched. And I put that note in my project page. This is where they were connected. So I started with the red, you do a provisional cast on, and then I just all the way around back. This was the last color and then they're connected there. I am so happy with this. So you can wrap it around twice and have a little bit of a looser fitting scarf if maybe you're not worried about like the wind's not too crazy today it is in the negatives with the wind chill so this morning i did braid is getting pulled that first one tighter and i wrapped it around three times and it is perfect and you could even if you're going for a walk take the third one and bundle up even cover your nose like it's amazing absolutely amazing I love it so much I will 100% be making another one I have plans not to start it super soon but I already have plans for another one so we'll talk more about that when the time comes but I am going to use another advent calendar to make another one but this one is so amazing like you need you need one of these because it's double thick already because you're working it in the round and then it just you can wrap it around like I said two three times it is so great I am can see myself making a lot of them for gifts because I think that's such a great gift okay so that is all my finished objects Like it's, it's always weird when I don't have them here to show you when it's ones that I've gifted because then I just feel like I'm completely forgetting something. <laughs> Works in progress. Let's start with things that you have seen before. So let's start with the dishcloths. I have these in a bag from Mountain State Stitches. And this has been my dishcloth bag for so long. It's such a great size to hold because I put all the yarn for the collar down inside of there. And it's just so great to hold everything. So the collar, oh my gosh, this stuff is so cold. I keep this in my Jeep because it's what I work on if I'm in the car waiting for Wyatt at a lesson or something. I just know this is in the car. I can't always work on my socks. They're usually in my purse, but this is, stays in the Jeep now. So I always have it there to work on. And I went and got it before I started recording and it is freezing. I imagine the needles are <laughs> crazy cold. This is Dishy Twist by Knit Picks. It's a worsted weight, 100% cotton yarn. And this is just the, it's black, I think, black twist. And I have two of these and I will use up every last bit of it. And then I will, I'll be on the last dishcloth when I run out and then I will just finish it off with the gray. I'm sure I'll show that as we go. And you guys have seen it before if you've been watching for a while. I did finish one yesterday while I was waiting on Wyatt at his group rehearsal at School of Rock. And the dishcloth pattern that I use is Grandma's second favorite. I believe is the name of it on Ravelry. It's by PJ Allen. It's a free pattern. I do the instructions for no holes. There's some that have like eyelet holes around the outside. I don't like that. So I just do the no holes version. It's super easy and mindless. I've had a lot of people ask me or like recommend dishcloth patterns and they're also pretty, but I just love the simplicity of this and not having to think of it. And yeah. I just love it. So I'm sticking with this one for now. Maybe eventually I'll get tired of it, but I'm not to that point <laughs> yet. <laughs> Mindless, 100%. I don't wanna have to look at the pattern 
at all when I'm doing dishcloths. I want them to be completely mindless. I'm using chow goo. I believe these are 16 inch. Oh, I am all wrapped up. I'll fix that later. Um, pretty sure that's 16 inch. And I think they're a US 8. Yes, US 8, five millimeter. And I do have these in the shop now. And I just have a tiny little bit. Just a little baby dishcloth. And this will just go back in the Jeep. All right, another new cast on is my Yarnable socks for January. So I've been getting the Yarnable subscription box for years. I, I'm pretty sure it's been years at this point um, by Cheryl of Hypnotic Yarn right from when she started it. And when I got January's this year, I was like, okay, this needs to be socks for Eric. So I cast on a pair of socks for Eric just using my vanilla socks on magic loop pattern. I have one done. So pretty. I just did a knit to purl to for the ribbing for 20 rounds. And then I think I did 50 rounds for the leg. Slip stitch heel flap as always. And on a US one, 2.25 millimeter, 32 inch chow goo. This is the second one. I finished the gusset decreases. So I'll just be moving right along on the foot. I got a good bit of this done yesterday. Decent amount of work on it. Then I did work on this some at Wyatt's lesson last night while I was waiting on him. So that's where a lot of the progress came from. But yeah, these should be done. I was going to say today, but probably not today because I think I'm going to work on my sweaters this afternoon. So this should be done by tomorrow, probably. I'm going to have um, coffee with a friend tomorrow morning. And then I have knit group tomorrow evening. So I should get a lot of work done on these. And I might want to have a another pair of socks ready to go and to be cast on now that I'm thinking of it. So that would be a good idea <laughs> with all the knitting time we'll get tomorrow, which is nice. That's a treat. I don't always get that much. So that'll be good. Is there anything else about those? I don't believe there was. I do have my cartwheels pullover to show you. I've made some progress on that and this in my Boston Terrier bag by Mountain State Stitches. And so let me get all the yarn out. Let me show you that while I'm pulling it out. It is Wool of the Andes Knit Picks Worsted in the Icicle Heather colorway. Very, very pretty blue. And it's very hard to photograph and get it. It's not showing accurate on the screen. It's more it's looking more blue on the screen than it actually is. It's very, very hard to get that accurate. So I finished the front, sorry, I've got things everywhere. The front and the back are buried. I've got the front and the back of the sweater done. So it is knit in pieces and then seamed together. And I am knitting this before I forget for the crazy cabled sweater cowl that I am hosting with Lindsay of Sock Witchery. And this is something that we started January 1st and it's going until the beginning of June. And it's any adult garment that has cables. So I do wanna clarify that because there were some things put into the finished objects thread that did not have cables. So it is an adult garment that has cables um, and a decent amount of cables. So the chatter thread is in Lindsay's Ravelry group. The FO thread is in my Ravelry group and I will link my Ravelry group down below so that you can find that. But yes, I have the front and the back done. They're the same. So I'm just going to show you one of them. I can't remember if I had one of these done or not last time. I don't remember, but here's what they both look like. Very, very pretty. Hopefully I got that whole thing. It's kind of hard to see with being behind it, but yeah. So I think it's going to be 
absolutely amazing. So I have the front and the back done. I started sleeve number one. Just absolutely gorgeous. The sleeves are fun. I, I loved doing all of the cables, but it's kind of fun with the sleeves. You don't have three different cabled sections. You just have the one going up the center. So it does make it feel like it goes a little bit quicker. I always feel like the first of anything takes longer though, because you're kind of making sure you're doing your increases or different things correctly. And um, once you have all, that all figured out, the second one seems to go a little bit quicker. This pattern is by Rita Taylor. I don't believe that I said that, but all the details are on the Ravelry project page. And I am following it as written using the needle sizes recommended, all of that. Oh, I forgot to put the rest of the yarn and stuff back in there. Trying to clean up as I go so there's not so much to do when I'm done. I started, so what happened? I finished my moon glow cowl and I really, really, really wanted to start the sea glass sweater. Originally I was like, when I finished my moon glow um, advent project, I'm gonna move on to my blush yarns advent project, but then the sea glass sweater came out and it's new and it's shiny and I had to start it. So the only project bag I had big enough for this craziness is my Fringe Supply Co. Hmm, I don't remember what this was called. They're not in business anymore anyways, but one of their bags. And it just barely fits everything in here. So the sea glass sweater is by Wool and Pine Designs. And I'll put a photo up here if I remember. You're, it's a color work sweater, one by one color work throughout and they used all kinds of scraps for it. It is a DK weight sweater. So what I've done for color one, the main color, which you can see here on the ribbing, I'm using Knit Pick Swish DK in the Dove Heather. This was the main color on all of the Bean and Olive sweaters that I did, mine and my niece's. And I had, I think I have like three or four left. So I decided to start with this and then I'll, I'll need to order more, but that'll get me going. So I started this craziness. <laughs> Let me show you what it looks like and then I'll talk about what I'm using for color two. It is definitely wild looking. <laughs> So color one is the gray, color two, I just have in here all kinds of scraps that mostly stick to a purple pink color scheme. This whole thing is just, oh, actually I have a picture right there. I can show you of the sweater. There's so many down in there show you I forgot that I actually I normally do not print the cover page or color but I did for this for some reason so that's the sea glass sweater not to be confused with the sea glass tee the sea glass tee is fingering weight sea glass sweater is DK weight and has long sleeves so they're the same but a little different Color two, that's what I was gonna talk about. Since it is a DK weight sweater, these are all fingering weight scraps. I'm holding fingering weight double. When I picked out all of these, I did not think about the fact that the majority of them are balls and that to hold them double, I would have to wind off half and then hold it double. 
I didn't want to do that. So many of these are wound into balls. And I'm like, I don't want to mess with that. I don't want to deal with that. That's way too much time. So what I'm doing is just grabbing two and holding them together for color two. So it's going to be like extra crazy. And the way that I'm doing it, I looked at so many different versions that they have a bunch of different versions in the pattern um, itself. Like a picture, I'm just gonna give you a little peek. There's like one, two, three, four, five, six different one by one color work suggestions. It says the options are endless, but it gives you kind of just some ideas of things you can do. And looking at these in the different photos that I had seen of it, I, figured out that I really liked the ones where they held one color for color one throughout. And then for color two, they changed the color every round. So I don't want like blocks of color two. Um, I want it to be a little wild and crazy and all over the place and everything's just meshed well and mixed together instead of like a block of pink, a block of purple. That's just not really my jam. So I'm just grabbing two random ones. I just reach in these bags and grab two and then hold them together. That does mean that I'm changing colors every round. Don't freak out. They have a whole, like they have so many videos for this pattern and they show you different ways that you can weave in your ends and they are amazing that you can kind of handle your ends some you're not weaving in but yeah so right now i have this jumble of ends right here and it's gonna be fine i'm gonna weave them in through the how did they show it through the um floats why could i not think of what that was called through the floats for that collar on the back of the work so yeah sea glass sweater is a go I haven't worked on it a ton I would be farther along but I was about to this point in the collar work when I realized I never switched to larger needles so I had to rip back to the ribbing and knit it again so that was a couple of hours of work that I lost but yeah one more look because it is pretty cool it's crazy I was kind of like oh I don't know do I really like this but it's, it is what scrappy is supposed to be, you know, fun, crazy, kind of eccentric. Like it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited. And I think I will have plenty of scraps. Like I said, I'll just need to order more of this eventually. I'm not in any rush to do that. I only have two of the nitpicks swish in here, but I'm pretty sure I have at least one more downstairs. So that's my other project. I don't have too many things going right now. I have my scrappy projects, which this could be included in as well. And I will probably talk about this on my scrappy Sunday videos, but I wanted to talk about it here too, because I had talked about dream knitting with it. And I don't think it'll be as long term of a project as like a scrappy blanket. Cause it is something I'm really wanting to work on. Okay. That's it for works in progress. That's all I got. Let me move all this stuff and then we can talk about some things that have arrived in the mail. Mm. First, before we do that, I pulled out some yarn for my next pair of socks. So a while back, I had my mother-in-law pick out some yarns and put them in a project bag that she wanted socks out of. And this is one of the things that she picked. I have a bunch of these mini skeins. I think these are from Dragon Horde Yarn and I think Tristan gave these to me when we went to Rhinebeck together a couple of years ago or well, more than a couple of years ago. Oh my gosh, was that like three, four years ago? How many years ago was that? Anyways, it's, I have no idea what the colorway name is. It's not on here but this is a, an older colorway of hers for sure. And I have five 20 gram minis, so I have a lot. This is one of the yarns my mother-in-law picked. So I pulled it out to do socks with it. And I also pulled from the latest 
wholesale order from polka dot creek that's over at crazy sock lady co i pulled this dk weight sock set out this is iced berries with navy and burgundy and it's 100 grams and then two 20 gram minis there's their logo look how pretty that is so i also pulled this out so i'm not sure which one which one should i do first dk weight or use up this i'm excited about this one because it's it's deep stash pretty much you know it's from maybe four years ago so it's been sitting for a while and i'm excited to do socks out of it let me know below which one you guys think i should do next because i do need to get one started so that i have some other kind of vanilla project to work on tomorrow because those socks will not take very long to do the foot on those when i have two different opportunities for vanilla knitting tomorrow. All right, let's talk about some things that have arrived in the mail. I'm gonna share this first because this was such a fun surprise to find in my PO box. Let me pull out the card here. This is from Barley Pearls. Chris and Krista. I will link their shop down below. And they sent over the cutest project back. They know that I like Jeeps. Look how cute this is. Just all kinds of Jeep stuff on this fabric. And then the inside has two pockets that have ducks on them. If you're a or if you've even followed me for a while, you've heard me talk about ducks and Jeeps, but, and then they sent me a little rubber duck. I mean, it's just so cute. So this is gonna go in Rosie. Rosie got a, a little thing as well, <laughs> but I love this. And they have a ring on the inside, perfect for putting some stitch markers and progress keepers on. <laughs> So yeah, my next sock project is 100% going in here. I just need to figure out which of the yarns I'm gonna use and get that in there. So that was a total surprise. And then I ordered some yarn from Legacy Fiber Arts. And this is their Skittles colorway on their steel toes, which is a 7525. Such a gorgeous colorway. I got the sock set with just the undyed mini skein. So many pretty colorways in there. And then Sue is so sweet and she sent along, this is their wonder colorway on their DK weight, um, superwash merino nylon blend. How pretty that is. And then she sent along a micro sock kit, which I've never had one of these from them. So this is super cute. It's a 50 gram skein for the full skein. My camera is struggling today. Doesn't want to focus. And a 20 gram mini skein. And this is in their Sweet Shop colorway. This was their Valentine's update is what these were from. These would be super cute for my niece, Lily. I might have to make her a pair of socks. I found a new to me yarn dyer who also lives in Ohio. I believe she's up Northern Ohio. And the name of her company is Heidi and Lana. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And this is her Stardust colorway with a Berry Passion Mini. So this is a sock set on her 90% superwash merino, 10% nylon base. It does, it feels like kind of rustic. I don't know that I've ever worked with a 90% um, superwash merino, 10% nylon. Usually it's a 75, 25 or an 80, 20. So this is a nice change and I'm really excited to try it out. Look how pretty that is. And I will have all of these shops linked down below. The last thing I ordered was an order from Knit Picks. I've been totally obsessed 
with their yarns for sweaters. I mean, I've loved their yarns for various things over the years, but just lately using that yarn for my cartwheels pullover, I just want to knit all the sweaters and I want to use Knit Picks yarn. It just, well, and I did my bean and olive out of it too. I just love it. So I ordered two sweaters quantities. This first one is Swish DK, which is what I used for the bean and olive and what I'm using for the main color in my sea glass. And I ordered this for the festival sweater, I believe is the name of it, um, by Petite Knit. I'll try to remember to put a picture up here for y'all. So I ordered the, I'm gonna try to mimic fairly closely. This is a little bit more of a tan maybe, I don't know, than in the photo um, of this sweater, but it's gonna closely mimic the look of this. So the nutmeg heather right here will be the main color and then the stripes will be in the black. So I ordered enough of these for a sweater and I need to open this one. I love when they come like this perfectly packaged. <laughs> this one is for the Andrea Mowry, I think it's DKR Everyday Sweater. This is Wool of the Andes Sport Weight in Claret Heather. Oh, look how pretty that is. So gorgeous. So I can't wait to do this. I did order enough that it will not, it's more cropped is how she knit hers, Andrea Maori, and I think that's how the pattern's written, but I will make it more of a longer, probably more of an oversized, um, comfy sweater, because that's just what I prefer. <laughs> so that's it, that's all I received in the mail. Those sweaters, who knows when they will be cast on, hopefully soon, but you know, there's just that problem of not having enough hours in the day to do all the knitting that I want to do. That's a real struggle. And I know that y'all can understand that completely. <laughs> so, all right, I think that's it for today. That's all I got. Um, I'm gonna clean up, I'm gonna edit this and get some knitting done this afternoon, hopefully, while I do some laundry. I hope that you all are doing well and I will see you guys again soon. Until then, happy knitting, bye.